Competency-based medical education is an exciting time to think about new innovations, implementing new ways of evaluating trainees in your program. CBME means to me exciting changes in medical education. I think the, the, the world of medical education has identified that each trainee is on a different learning curve. Competency-based medical education will adhere to that, will address that. So it will take each trainee and uh, look at them individually to see how and what they need in terms of being successful in their training. I think it's important because it's going to more accurately evaluate each resident on a specific moment in time. I think that that's important because it doesn't make the faculty responsible for failing or passing on one moment or one evaluation. CVME is important because it's going to tailor the training of a residency program to each specific resident. I think the transition to CBD will create some, some angst for the, the PAs, but in reality it's just going to streamline their processes that, as well. It's going to be the important steps are going to be to create a system of tracking what residents have accomplished through the year and when they've accomplished it. So I think initially it will create a change and that change will all, always be a bit of work to get this running, but over time it will actually facilitate the task for the, uh, for the program assistants. As a PA, your role will be to continue to support program directors uh, in ensuring that tasks are, are tracked and, and that everything is done in a timely fashion. I think that there is a few different ways that it'll be a little bit different um, for the program administrators. I think it's going to be a lot more increased documentation and there's sort of the, you know, the the gatekeepers of the resident binders and portfolios. So dealing with that is certainly going to be a challenge because it's going to be increased data gathering, increased um, maintaining of their sort of progress because it's going to be that that your program directors will look at to determine the promotion to the different stages, kind of like they do now, but hopefully with increased um, uh, increased data. It'll also mean, I think, working on some of the educational initiatives with the program directors to further develop their skills and simulation curriculum or um, doing a needs assessment maybe to figure out what they need to amplify a little bit in their program, whether it's assessment or increased teaching opportunities or maybe revamping their formal curriculum so their academic half day schedule to accommodate this sort of staging process now. So a little bit um, of sort of taking a step back and looking at the organization of the program with their program director and assisting with that. The program administrator's primary role or biggest role in the transition to CBD is going to be with the scheduling. There's going to be uh, a lot of residents that aren't going to know what they're doing and a lot of attendings that are also going to be figuring this out for the first time. So it's going to be acting as the person that can look at the chaos and find some kind of organization to link up the right people with the right residents at the right time. It's not going to be an easy task, but I know they're up to it, definitely in our program. The transition to CBD could be challenging, um, and I think that the PA is going to play a large role. It will be a, uh, a challenge for them to get uh, everyone on board, and also because they will know of the upcoming changes which need to be implemented. Some of my day-to-day -day activities, well, every day is different but um, a lot of it is fine-tuning the assessments that we have. So fine-tuning the CCAT, we're also using fluid survey for other assessments, liaising with staff and residents to make things more user-friendly for them. So because these tools are relatively new, there's a lot of troubleshooting that I have to go through, so trying to make sure that everything runs smoothly is the main goal of the CBD group. So trying to figure out solutions to any of the problems that we encounter, because that will make it a lot easier for 
the group of residents that will start afterwards. In my day-to-day -day activities, we still have to schedule the residents in their subspecialty rotations. The assessments have changed slightly. The format might be different, but a lot of it's automated now, which is nice. So just a few button clicks and I have a report generated for the staff. I think PAs might be afraid of the transition to CBD because a lot of the terminology is now different. So for example, goals and objectives are now milestones in EPAs and that seems very different from what we were doing before. It is different, but not drastically so. There's The EPAs are the high level achievements for the residents and the milestones are the stepping stones. So it's, it's very much the same. It's just reformatting the goals and objectives into attainable achievements for the residents. And it's not necessarily time-based anymore, it's competency-based, based on whatever skill they have to complete for a rotation. The new group of residents, the first ones to start with the CBD program, they've really taken ownership of their learning. The onus is on them to complete the requirements for the rotation. So whether it's um, a multiple choice test or a learning case, they they are prompting me or the staff to say, hey, you know, we need to complete this by a certain date. Can you, you know, review the case with me or release the test to me? They're really on the ball when it comes to their learning. A few of the key projects that I'm working on right now, one of them is tracking the residents' educational activities. So whether it's their assessments, their simulations, multiple choice question exams, everything has to be tracked. So we're trying to figure out a system to do that for the, for the residents. The other system that I'm working on is the Learning Case Platform, which is already established, but the cases need to be changed and updated. So I'm working on that. That's an ongoing basis. And the other is fine-tuning the assessments that we have. The feedback for the learning cases from the staff and residents has been extremely positive. My biggest piece of advice is to get involved. Don't just wait for the information to be fed back to you. Get involved in the discussion. Feel free to ask questions. This is new to everyone, including your program director, so you guys are all in the same boat. Um, don't be afraid of change. It's great.